And the justice system is obviously, that's a really interesting thing to talk about. And constitutional law is a fascinating thing for people studying. This idea that we argue about the Second Amendment, like, let's let constitutional lawyers, I think, discuss a lot of those things. And we should all understand that and be curious about it. But I would, the, our Constitution is also silly. Like, let's remake everything. Right. The document that was drafted by some of the brightest minds in history and established basic rights for all Americans is silly. Let us all, like a bunch of kids playing with Lego blocks, just get rid of everything and rebuild the most powerful and successful country in the world from the ground up, simply because our Lord and Savior, Pete Dominic, thinks everything is silly. Like, let's have that conversation. There's so much better that we can do. Have a serious conversation about what kind of guns and bullets people can have. Not that they can have them or that they can't have Like, wait, 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 wait. What? Did he just have a Rick James moment? <laughs> See, I never just did things just to do them. Come on, I mean, what am I gonna do? Just, just all of a sudden just jump up and grind my feet on somebody's couch? Like it's like it's, you know, something to do? Come on, I got no more sense than that. Yeah, I remember grinding my feet on Eddie's couch. You know? Have a serious conversation about what kind of guns and bullets people can have. Not that they can have them or that they can't have. Like, he wants to have a conversation about what bullets and guns people can and can't have, but not a conversation about what they can and can't have. Really? Uh, that's the conversation. That's where we should be right now. Everything gets regulated. Everything. There are trade-offs in healthcare. There are trade-offs in everything. But Americans now are so divided. They want everything that they want. That th that compromise is something that we don't do. As Americans, much less in in government, that's that's preposterous. Peter, we have over 300 federal gun laws in this country and 20,000 on the state and local level. At this point, we've more than compromised. As a matter of fact, we're going to need some of that back. I, I agree with that. What I'm saying about the gun thing, the most fucked up part about the messiness of the gun thing is that even if you made guns illegal, even if you said you can't have any bullets, You'll all go to jail. There's so many guns. You're not getting them all. It's not possible. Eek. There's more guns than there are people, which means there's more than 300 and what, 30 million guns there in are. this country alone? It's absolutely it's the most important point in the discussion. That's a nutty number, man. You really stop and think about that number? You're like, what? Is that real? There's nothing nutty about there being 300 million guns in this country. That has a second amendment. We have nearly as many cars in America as we do people. People have cars for convenience. People have guns to protect themselves among other things. I don't see why this is so hard to understand. But you don't really stop the behavior by necessarily creating certain laws about why someone might behave yes. a certain way and shoot people. That's not gonna necessarily change. What you do is you do limit the access to uh, certain types of weapons and rounds of ammunition, right? This, this is just a dumb statement. And what makes it worse is that he thinks he's saying something profound. Murder is illegal. This would be a law that limits behavior that you said doesn't work. Drugs are also illegal, which would be a law that limits access that you said would work. However, I would like to direct you to the rampant drug use in every major city in America. Yeah, well, the, the real question is why would someone do that, right? That's the number one question. Uh, like limiting, like it's a, it's a harder Incel question. It's a harder, but it's a harder question to answer. The easier question to answer is make them less accessible. Yes, if the people who have problems that we can't figure out or solve. First of all, that's not a question. That's just juvenile, childish thinking. The idea that we could just create a law and instantly all the guns go away. And as I alluded to before, if that worked, there'd be no drugs in America. To violence in movies and violence in video games, does that have an impact on them? I'm not the guy to answer that question. Whether I'm, or not it has I, an impact on them. It's is, a variable. It, but it's it a is. variable that I think merits discussion. I don't know if it's I, true or not. Here's why I don't think it is. Because... You don't think it merits discussion? Well, let me make this point and then you decide if you think it merits discussion. Okay. The... Vid violent video games are played at far higher rates in Japan, and they don't have the gun violence we have. It's a good point. They have a very different culture, though. The way they don't they have they access to guns. Other. Based on Pete's logic, the more guns a country has, the more gun-related homicides. The U.S. has the most guns in the world, yet we rank 30th in gun-related homicides. Do I really need to say anything else? That's true. That's it. The, 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 but can, they don't it, also have a lot of... They've had a few mass Joe, stabbings. It, the, 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 it's but. the access. I, dude, I've shot guns. I shoot guns. 
I get the, I, I, I have nothing but respect for hunters. I grew up in a hunting community. So no respect for people who own guns for self-defense and to protect this country. Got it. Uh, but I mean, I, I don't know. I don't think that there's much past the conversation about access, accessibility to guns that can fire that many rounds that quickly, killing that many people. I don't think we have to get rid of those somehow. But I agree. How do you do it? Yeah, that's the answer. question. So basically, you want to get rid of every gun because they're all semi-automatic, even the ones used in mass shootings, and none of them shoot faster than the other. My semi-automatic handgun shoots just as fast as my AR-15. You're, that's the most important point. There's already 330. There's more guns than there are people. So what do you do? So by the way, I think you buy as many as you can back for sure. You spend a whole bunch of taxpayer money. Just help. By the way, there's a ton of people in a bind right now that have a rifle. But like, oh my God, I'm not gonna be able to afford my insulin. Let me get rid of this uh, AK-47 to live another month. You buy I some guns that. back. It's a good expenditure of money. And then melt them down and turn them into furniture for uh, people. Like, this is, this is just a dumb statement. Did you ever stop to think that there are so many guns out there because people actually want them and that the government using the money I pay in taxes to offer me a fraction of what I paid for my gun isn't going to incentivize me to sell it back to them when I can sell the gun on the commercial market for double or triple what the government is offering. And let's just be honest, if the government gave me more than what I paid for for my gun, I'd just sell my gun back and then use the money to go buy a more expensive gun or the same gun and then some ammo. So if you wanted to do that without changing the second amendment, like you just have a, a buyback where you just offer people the opportunity to make some money by giving their guns up. Well, the, the second amendment has been interpreted wrong by the Supreme Court, in my opinion. I mean, it doesn't say that people should have, until 2008 it didn't say that, nobody thought that, that people should have a personal right to guns till the Heller case. but. So I don't think you even need to talk about the Second Amendment. I think just people just need to agree that these guns shouldn't be sold. Well, the you ammunition. Need to talk about. <laughs> Keep in mind, Pete said this at the beginning of the video. Studying this idea that we argue about the Second Amendment, like let's let constitutional lawyers, I think, discuss a lot of those things. And, and now he's saying that the Supreme Court, a court filled with constitutional lawyers, got the interpretation of the Second Amendment wrong. <laughs> Bro, stop it! About the Second Amendment. I mean, it's it's a big conversation. No, because people country. can have guns. You can have guns. The brick has well, a right to have guns. You okay, just can't have these guns anymore. Well, yeah, we already have that law. It's called the National Firearms Act. But if you ask me, that law is unconstitutional as hell. The Second Amendment didn't say only these guns. It said arms. You banned the machine guns, and now you want to ban the semi-autos. Yeah. What were you saying again about compromise? No there's, more of those ones. You can have all these guns. There's no restrictions anywhere, right? Like and they in work. New York City, you can't have a handgun. Yeah, they work. Right? You can't even have, I don't think you can have a, a, a you can have a switchblade in New York City. Hmm. Yeah, Cyrus uh, Vance, the the DA there mm -hmm. is like it's terrified that they're changing the federal government is changing the law because he knows that those gun laws in New York work really well. El Paso was ranked the second safest city in the US. Need I remind you that El Paso is in Texas and shares a border with Juarez, Mexico, one of the most dangerous cities in the world. Please stop it, Pete. There is no one-to-one -one correlation between cities with lax gun laws and cities with strict gun laws. Let me also point out, New York City ain't even in the top 20. Oh, and I almost forgot, there are more pro-gun cities on the top 20 safest cities list than there are cities with strict gun control laws. Well, and by the way, people always make the argument, well, they have those gun laws in Chicago and there's a ton of violence. That's because Chicago's on the border of Indiana, it doesn't have them. Guns go across the border just fine. Then why doesn't Indiana not have the same gun violence as Chicago, Pete? Again, by your logic, if Chicago has the gun violence that it has because it shares a border with a state that has lax gun laws, why doesn't that state have the same, if not higher, gun violence than Chicago? That's the, the gun laws work. They work. Well, Chicago is also in the middle of a bitter drug war. Well, yeah. I mean, that's where yeah. the violence is coming from. But yeah. we should people should have less accessibility to those types of but guns, like every other civil society in the world. Come on, this is like but yeah. Except over ninety-five percent of gun violence in Chicago is committed with handguns. Are those the guns you're talking about, Pete? On that, what is the Second Amendment exactly as it's written? Can you, the right to bear arms shall not be infringed. So how do you think that the Supreme Court misinterpreted that? 
that in the in the 2008 Heller case, everybody should just uh, I would plug the work of Eric Siegel, who's a well-regulated a, militia being necessary to the security of a free state. Comma. The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Yeah, those commas get argued by I know. constitutional scholars, scholars for a day. Yeah, days but the Supreme time. Court didn't decide until 2008 that Americans had a right to have their own weapon. Oh, once again, this is so dumb. If the militia wasn't the people, they would have said the right of the militia to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Like, come on, man, stop it. You're embarrassing yourself. That's such a crazy statement. Like when you read it, it's so interesting because you, we're, we're going back in time trying to figure out how people in 1776 thought about guns and whether or not that applies to us. Because if it doesn't apply to us, we have to think on oh, 1789. A bunch of regular people came together forming a militia with their personal guns and fought a tyrannical government that was trying to take their guns. And then immediately after, they wrote the Second Amendment saying in order to protect this new free and independent state that we formed after coming together as regular people with our personal guns to fight off a tyrannical government who was trying to take our guns, the people's right to own firearms shall not be infringed. We know exactly what they were thinking. There's nothing cryptic about the motivation behind the Second Amendment. The, the, the whole gun thing is a racket to make money. That's what that is. It's, it's a way you sell fear. Like, are you, I mean, home invasion is any family's worst fear. But it doesn't happen very much. Nor does kidnapping, nor do all, a lot of these crimes that all my helicopter, our generation of parents is helicopter parents terrified of everything, not... That's true. That's true. Not you're letting right. their kids go outside. You, you're right. Come home, on. Thinking that your kid's going to get kidnapped. You don't know anybody. Okay. Mass shootings make up less than 1% of gun deaths in this country. But you want to ban guns because of something that happens less than 1% of the time. Whereas home invasions happen exceedingly more times than mass shootings do. Millions of people each year use guns to defend their lives. Pete, you have no idea what you're talking about. Who had their kid kidnapped? You're, but you're generalizing because home well, invasions do happen sometimes. Right, People but that's not how we should make sometimes. laws. But again, you want to make a law banning a gun using less than 1% of gun deaths. But we don't have to exist like everybody's going to kidnap your kid or everyone's going to break into your home. But, but I'm saying but those kind the of... The balance is that sometimes it's real. That's why people want to be able to have guns, because sometimes someone can break in your house and people have defended their house but, and their property with guns. Sure, but it's, it, it, it's, is it a way, is it a realistic threat, or is it something that the, that the gun industry creates these amazing ads and scares the shit out of people? Oh, come on, man. It's, crime is real. You know, yeah, whether, whether they crime make is real, ads or it's not, certainly crime real. is still real. Just so you know, the average number of home invasions per year from 1994 to 2010 was 1,030,000. That sounds pretty damn realistic to me, Pete. I think the, the clear point is the reason why we have so many guns in America is because there's so much money to be made off of them. I think we could absolutely limit them and regulate them and have a thoughtful conversation. I think that's where most, most people are at, although I hate that generalization. That's like saying the reason there's so many cars in the world is because you can make money off of them. Duh. Pete, it's called capitalism. Clearly people agree with the Second Amendment because they're buying guns, thus creating a market to sell guns. There's something to that, but there's also something to the reason why we have so many cars. People like First, them. I'll have that conversation. People we should like get rid them. of all the cars. Okay, I'm going to head out. I think having a thoughtful conversation about guns and why they're a huge part of our culture and not another culture, the way that other cultures and countries regulate their weapons, the, the problems that they have, our problem, sure, we should talk about. Because we are free people, Pete, plain and simple. We are the freest country in the world. That's why. It's why you can say the ridiculous stuff that you're saying now without being prosecuted. Because we are a country that prioritizes freedom. And if you don't have the means to effectively check your government or effectively defend your life and or your family, you are not free. And the most effective tool to do all of those things is a gun. This is why other countries regulate their guns the way that they do. Because they don't prioritize freedom. Mental health. But the problem with that conversation that people don't want to have is everything costs money. That's why you have to pay taxes. Paying taxes is the price of civilization. What does that have to do with mental health? You have to pay p for people to help people. Right. You can't advocate in government, Republican or Democrat, for the... This is what, unfortunately, 
Trump and Republicans have advocated, let's get mental health solutions to the violence. Let's do that. And everybody's behind that, except they cut the Obamacare programs that funded mental health. It's just you can't do You have to spend the money providing mental health. It is a problem. It should be addressed. But it's not the main issue is definitely the guns and the bullets in them. Gun homicides affect less than 1% of the population, and mass shootings are less than that. The guns and the bullets are not the main issue, especially when we already have over 20,000 gun laws in this country. And if the guns and the bullets were the main issue, then knives are the main issue in every stabbing, the car and drunk driving accidents, etc., etc. Pete, you are clueless. The conversation about like, like the, the freedom, like the, the Second Amendment to me is... It's just your interpretation. Fine. Whatever your interpretation is, is well, that, fine. That's what's interesting about it. But if there's a it human is, it impact, isn't. it's a healthcare issue. And they... Oh, Lord. What is he talking about? No, Pete. The fact that 70,000 people died from drug overdose is a healthcare issue. 610,000 people dying every year from heart disease is a healthcare issue. 600,000 people dying from cancer each year is a healthcare issue. 251,000 people dying from medical error is a healthcare issue. Guns are not a healthcare issue. They are a rights issue. And that right was expressed clear as day when they said, shall not be infringed. And they, the, it's so extreme. It's really... If you want to know the answer to healthcare issues, you should talk to public health experts. They have those answers. They have the research. But what, but wait, hold on, what research on what? On, on well, they don't have enough murders? research on they don't have enough research on gun violence. Well, what are unfortunately. you talking about then? I'm talking about if you want to know the solutions for what is impacting and creating uh, death by any measure, accidental death. Right, but we're uh, talking about gun violence, right? right? What healthcare professionals have the solutions to gun violence? I think a lot of healthcare solutions. I think I think certainly surgeons have argued for why certain ammunition has destroying the inside of the the body and unsurvivable. I think public health officials have argued. Certainly, pediatricians all argued this idea that you can't ask a parent if they have a gun in the house because the gun lobby is against that because they're building this conspiracy that the government is going to track your gun. Why else would the government want to know if you had a gun in your house, Pete? That's terrible. Your pediatrician has to ask you, do you have a pool? Where do you keep the poison? Where are the guns? Because God forbid, you do, you're not responsible enough or educated enough to know that that kid might accidentally get that gun, and it happens all the time. It's funny. He says kids getting accidentally killed by guns, which is less than 3% of gun deaths, happens all the time. But the millions of home invasions? Nah, that doesn't happen often enough to warrant having a gun for protection. This is crazy. There's a rule against that. Yeah, public health officials and, and doctors and physicians are pretty much on the same case with this issue. These guns and mental health, uh, I think, experts, too. I, I don't know. Maybe there's a, a large disagreement. And if there is, I'm happy to be wrong about this or any dumb shit I've said. You said a lot of dumb shit, Pete. A lot. Unfortunately, there are too many people out there saying the same dumb shit. Right now, there's a culture war against the Second Amendment, which is why I need your help spreading our message to counter their message. You can do this by leaving a comment, sharing this video, and click the bell and subscribe button. Let my voice be your voice, and let them know you want to keep America tactical. Because the right to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed wasn't a suggestion, it was a directive. Also, if you're wondering where to get your I will not comply, I lost all of my guns in a boating accident, the AR-15 is protected by the Second Amendment, and your state-specific Keep America Tactical shirts, click the links in the description section of this video.